good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I know, I know. But you know, I think what the case, um, the Irene, the Irene Robertson, yeah. Um, no, there are no page numbers. <laughs> I have to fix it. I, I haven't gotten around to fixing that yet. But anyway, the, in the case Irene Roberts, I wrote it was a case for reparations against the Venezuelan government. Okay. And it was in the International Court of Justice at The Hague in the Netherlands. And the court held that, quote, the contention that this claim is barred by the lapse of time would, if admitted, allow the Venezuelan government to reap advantage from its own wrong in failing to make just reparation to Mr. Quirk at the time the claim arose. The questions for determination here are the fact of Mr. Quirk's individual loss or injury, the liability of the Venezuelan government, therefore, and the amount, if any, of compensation that is due. And so, <laughs> right, I mean, what I'm basically arguing here is that the fact that so much time has gone by, all of these workers who worked have been dead a, a few years, at, at a minimum, a hundred years or more. Um, but the fact of the lapse of time in the governments involved, the powerful governments, the United States, England, other governments involved in helping de facto employers to deprive private citizens who had done nothing wrong of 100% of their wages for 244 years and then to liberate these workers without any compensation and to leave their relatives and their descendants and their heirs penniless and still struggling financially, many of them, there are the exceptions of course, um, like Oprah and Will Smith and, you know, Jay-Z, but, you know, a, quite a, a significant number of the relatives of these workers are still financially disadvantaged in society. And to say that there is no accountability, there's no responsibility on the part of these governments because too much time has gone by to make reparations, I, I find it unpersuasive. Because as noted by the International Court of Justice, the government had a duty to make these reparations in a timely manner, and they didn't do so. And so the failure of the government to make these reparations in a timely manner does not later on excuse them from making reparations by using the argument that too much time has gone by. I think... Um, I think, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you, if that makes sense for you, but for me, <laughs> right, for me, it makes complete sense that, you know, the government involved and the monarchies, okay, involved in depriving these millions of civilians from the African continent of 100% of their wages for 244 years, even though none of these people had done any wrong. It's like, you know, Russia invading the Ukraine and, you know, doing something similar to the Ukrainians and, you know, they hadn't done anything wrong. I mean, you know, the, the government of, of these invading powers like the Russian government at this point have a duty to make reparations to these, these people. And if, if 400 years goes by and they don't, and these people continue to say that, you know, you deprived us of, you know, any ability to, to, um, to, to, to feel um, emotionally and psychologically healed, uh, you deprived us of um, our broken societies, or, well, not deprived, but you created these broken societies, these financial deficits, and you you just never made amends and so you can't say too much time has gone by because you failed to make amends in in 2022 when this all happened um i think it's a valid argument if, if that makes sense for you right um you you can't use time as a bar 
to doing what is right, to doing what you should have done um, in a timely manner. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Thank you.